जानाति तव समापनम इट इज मेमोरी एंड ट्रांजैक्शन हैपनिंग ऑल द टाइम मस्ट बी अ कॉन्शियस प्रोसेस इफ इट्स अ कंपल्सिव प्रोसेस देन यू विल पे द प्राइस फॉर इट इट इज नॉट दैट दिस इज सिन दैट इज सिन क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज योर प्रायोरिटी इन योर लाइफ Sadhguru, how can a person stay committed to someone in a relationship? Is it natural to love someone and yet be sexually attracted to others? What should be the proper course of action that should follow or how does one handle this? See, uh, there is a psychological integrity, there is emotional integrity, but there is a biological integrity also. Integrity does not mean morality. Integrity means you create a situation where it works best for you so when we say integrity suppose i say there is a certain integrity to my body this means it's strong and resistant to a whole lot of things isn't it it doesn't mean i'm morally stuck in something so i'm talking about i want you to understand the word integrity in that context we are talking about integrity in terms of strength of this life so if that is the thing is it true do you remember how your great 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 grandmother 10 generations ago looked like do you remember no but her nose is sitting on your face <laughs> yes or no body remembers isn't it body remembers your forefathers a million years ago yes or no so what you calling as my body is a heap of memory isn't it so yes. hmm? memory or no See now from Nepal you came to Shillong you eat a lot of this uh, meghalaya food your features won't change because your body remembers what is your genetics no matter what or you start eating let's say cow's food or dog's food your body will not get confused and become a dog or a cow because there is evolutionary memory in this do what you want it never gets confused isn't it you start thinking i am a dog and start barking like one still the body won't change yes or no mentally you can but body has such a deep rooted memory so this entire body what you have is essentially a certain integrity of memory if that loses that memory integrity then you will see it will become vulnerable to so many things now the nature of the body is such that anything that you touch with a certain level of involvement will naturally absorb that memory not mentally physically it will absorb that memory in traditionally in this culture we call this runanubandha you heard of such a word hmm? runanubandha what this means is physical memory that you gather why people you know you will see this with people let's say in their home they will go and sit in one place this will usually the older people you will see they want to go and sit in the same place they won't sit in another place have you noticed this yes. even your dog he comes if he wants to sit here he'll smell this he'll smell that he'll smell that he'll smell that and after much searching he will settle down in that particular place next time you chase him somewhere he comes he goes and sits in the same place because there is memory today there is forensic equipment where you are sitting here right now you went away after 2 3 8 hours if they come not with a uh, a dog a dog can easily do it but with forensic equipment we come here and just check this chair and we know it was you who was sitting here not somebody else so there is memory wherever you sit stand whatever you touch there is memory and transaction happening all the time well you come from nepal in india also it's very much there in south is very strongly there north maybe it's become weakened we people never give salt to another person do you know this here also if somebody gives you salt you say please keep it there because there are certain materials which transmit memory much better than others salt sesame seeds lemons like this if you give 
Traditional people, they'll say, keep it there, I will take it. Because they don't want to develop runanabandha to you, with you. Now, uh, in India, if you see older generation of people, if you try to shake their hands, they'll do, do like this, because they don't want to get runanabandha with you. Because the idea is to keep the integrity of your body's memory in such a way that it doesn't become vulnerable to other things, that you become a very integrated life. If you want to nurture yourself to be a certain possibility, then you have to maintain the memory integrity. This is what runanabandha means. You keep your physical memory to the minimal. A sexual interaction is something where a huge amount of memory is taken from one to the other. So always, not in this society, everywhere else, forever people saw the advantage of keeping that memory to the minimal. If you… if you make that memory very complex, you will see to be, be at ease will become very difficult after some time. There will be pleasure but there will be no joy in your life. You can… you can observe people, don't go by what I'm saying. You can observe people, they will have pleasure, they will giggle all the time, but you look at them, there is no joy in them, there's no ease. Because the ease will go away with excessive memory. This is not only with sexuality, there are many other things that you do like this. Right now you see this very much in the Western societies. Wherever I go, especially in America, people will come, Sadhguru, where is my hug? I say, it must be with you. <laughs> Why is it with me <laughs> It is not like at a certain moment when you feel close to somebody, you hug them. It's like all the time you have to touch people. Because today psychiatrists are analyzing these things and saying that is because they have not been sufficiently touched by their mothers and parents at an early age. When they grow up, they're desperately longing to touch somebody all the time. All these things have a serious impact on one's life. How much physical contact when the child is born, this will determine how much physical contact they will long for later on. And the memory of what an in infant picks up from the mother at that time, because till a child becomes four and a half years of age, in many ways energy-wise it's not a separate life, it's still attached to the mother's body. Actually, if by nature if people go till then, they must be drinking the mother's milk and connected up to four and a half years, that's how naturally it was. So, the energy doesn't mature. At that time, more and more memory that you come… get from the mother is better and better to strengthen this. But once the child begins to move out and be becomes an individual, life is organizing itself. People come to me and say, Sadhguru, can you bless my daughter, can you bless my son? First thing I ask is, how old? If they say fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, all right. If they're over twenty-one, I say no, because me blessing you, Blessing will not go to your child. You may still think emotionally that's my child, but as far as life is concerned, it's become fully separate. Generally, the course of life is considered to be approximately eighty-four years or one thousand and eight cycles of the moon. The cycles of the moon and our body is very directly connected. Only because our mother's bodies were in sync with the cycles of the moon, we are born, otherwise we wouldn't be born, isn't it? Hello? So, a full life is considered one thousand and eight cycles of the moon, which will approximately consider as eighty-three to eighty-four years. So if one crosses eighty-four, it's considered a full life. In this, the first quarter is the only time when it is connected to parentage. After that, the child must move, because energy-wise you cannot connect those two lives anymore. So that is when the longing, if you have not created enough integrity within yourself, the longing for another body multiplies. Even though the hormonal phase may be higher between fifteen to twenty, the longing to bind and bond with somebody increases after twenty-one years of age because unknowingly you have… you're like a satellite who fell off the main mother. You come off the motherboard, 
Now you want to attach to something unless you find some integrity. This is why between twelve and eighteen, one must do lot of sadhana to strengthen the body so that you don't desperately bind yourself to something or somebody. You must consciously, if you wish to take a partner, it must be a conscious process. If it's a compulsive process, then you will pay the price for it. This is not a question of morality. It is not that this is sin, that is sin. The question is, what is your priority in your life? If your priority is to make this life rise to a higher possibility, then you must be conscious. If you want to somehow live and go, it's okay. <laughs>